I mean, it's pretty undeniable. American cities are broken. Local politicians and left-wing prosecutors have totally abdicated their duty to keep citizens safe. And so every day, millions of Americans face violent crime and an imminent danger. And they don't want to live this way. But their leaders seem to care more about protecting criminals than punishing injustice. And that's the world that Marine veteran Daniel Penny lives in. And in that moment of anarchy, that's the world Daniel Penny stepped up and was forced to protect his fellow subway riders. For that, now, he's facing serious jail time. Many of his fellow New Yorkers wish someone like Penny stepped up in their moment of need. One recent victim of subway crime said as much last night. So they come out there and they attack people like me and other people who's going to work innocently, who know they can't really defend themselves, because I'm pretty sure they know how the system works. They've been in, in and out of it so much that they know what they could do and what they can't do. That's why he didn't want to kill me. He knew he would end up there. He just wanted to damage me, because he damaged me. Mm. He damaged my life. I would never be the same again. I'm not that person that I was seven months ago. And if I had somebody like mm. Penny around, maybe things would have been different. That poor lady lost her eye in her tragedy on the subway. Stephen A. Smith is the host of the new the No Mercy podcast. He's my old friend. I guess some would say my friend of me. And I'm so glad to have him with me tonight on the program. What's up, man? Glad yeah. to have you here. I see you, I see you looking all polished, nice haircut and all of that stuff. Oh, you're a host now. You're a host now. That's why I had to come and join you. I'm a busy man. But I said I gotta make time for this one. This is a special night. I What's know, going on, man? I know you're a busy man. And I know that <laughs> because between the NBA playoffs and the No Mercy podcast, yes. you're all over the place. Let me ask you this, yeah. Stephen A. I think the world needs more men like Daniel Penny to step mm -hmm. up. What do you think about this encounter between Daniel Penny and Jordan Neely on the subway? Well, it's unfortunate and it's hard to come to a definitive conclusion. You listen to Mayor Eric Adams. I applaud the position that he took when he said, let's find out, let the matter be investigated by the district attorney's office. Let's, sign, let's see what that reveals. And then after that, a decision needs to be made. Uh, investigation followed, and obviously uh, Perry is being charged with manslaughter charges. My position was it on, was, was this is where it came down to. Okay. If you're skilled enough to know how to put the chokehold on someone, you should be knowledgeable enough to know when enough is enough and to let them go. Having said all of that, again, I don't know all the facts, so I'm not ready to convict him like a lot of people, politicians and citizens, have been so quick to convict this man of that. I think we need to hear all the evidence. He did have him in a chokehold for in excess of three minutes. That seemed a bit excessive, particularly considering that he had two other people helping him. But then again, we need to you know more. Got to be careful with and Monday morning quarterbacking, with. right? You've got to be exactly. careful in a situation like this, sure. Monday morning quarterbacking. In my sure. estimation, while I appreciate you wanting to wait for the facts, Stephen A., I don't mm -hmm. think the man should have even been charged. And I'm going to give you two okay. reasons for that. Uh, okay. One, was it reckless? To your point on how long he held the chokehold, he apparently rolled over Neely several times and gave him a relief position to begin to breathe. I don't okay. think what we see here was reckless, and I certainly don't think he intended to kill Neely. And then to the larger mm -hmm. point, by even charging him, you create a disincentive okay. for strong men. Stephen A., you have sisters. You had a beloved mother. You were raised right here in New York City. You yeah. disincentivize strong men stepping up to help the vulnerable. Of course. No doubt about that. I don't, I don't disagree with you. I get where you're coming from with that. Again, one of those details that you just pointed out in terms of him leaning over so mm -hmm. he could breathe. I was not aware of that. So fairness to you in regards to that. But what I would say to you is this. As a person that's from Hollis, Queens, that took the F train, the very train that this happened on, I took the, first, the F train for most of my young life on many, many occasions. I can't tell you the amount of times I saw an individual who, who just seemed to have some mental issues, shouting, screaming. I didn't yeah. hear them talk about how they wish they, you know, they're ready to die or they don't mind going to jail and what have you. That can be a scary situation. So you understand why it would raise a red flag and put right. folks on high alert. Then again, that's entirely different than actually putting your hands on somebody or doing harm to them. That's why we've got to find out more. And that's why the investigation was warranted because we don't know the intricate details. But based on what you're talking about, right. I can understand where you're coming from. And as a native hey. New Yorker that's seeing crime ravaging through our streets or whatever. I don't blame a lot of citizens for being scared as hell right now Absolutely. for some of the stuff that's going on because there's certainly not enough punishment, but there's far too much crime.
Anyone that's lived in New York has known what you're talk, you've talked about here. Everyone right. has known that scary moment on the train. And uh, from what yeah. I understand, Daniel Penny grew up in Long Island, lived in Queens. So he was probably mm -hmm. not unfamiliar with these situations. And now I'm speculating, Stephen A., my suspicion is he's felt somehow this time was different. This was not just a crazy man yelling and ranting and raving. This one had the potential for violence. That's my speculation. But I want to move to this, Stephen A. My old friend texted me today. He said, I want to come at you about John ja Morant. John Moran okay. is the NBA superstar about yeah. uh, with the Memphis Grizzlies. He has been suspended mm -hmm. for now. You can see on the side of your screen, he's flashing a gun in an Instagram Live video. I said right. earlier this week, Stephen A., that I don't think he should be suspended for what amounts to dumb but legal behavior. Everyone, Stephen A., everyone has disagreed with me on this count, and I know you do as well. Yeah, because, you know, you're usually ill-informed when it comes to sports matters. That's not your forte, even though you sound great <laughs> talking about it. But then when we get to the facts, you always got some slippage there. Here's the reality of the situation. He's been involved in several instances. He was involved in an incident last summer where he allegedly got into an issue with a high school prospect, came out of his house with a gun. There was another issue involving a friend in Indianapolis where after a game, some kind of laser, red dot laser, was being pointed in the direction of some, some folks with the Indiana the Pacers party. Then it was the issue he got suspended over for eight games that cost him over $600,000. Now right. there's this. He had met with the commissioner, Adam Silver, of the National Basketball Association, looked him dead in his face and essentially told him, this is not me, this is not indicative of my character, and it won't happen again. And yet turns around and this kind of thing happens. So when you're looking at it in a vacuum and you're thinking about the fact that no laws were broken, no crime was committed, and obviously he plays in the state. I don't know which car where, where he was in terms of when he was in the car for the latest incident, but he plays for the Memphis Grizzlies. That's in Tennessee, and obviously in Tennessee, you don't even need a permit to carry. Right. So he didn't break any laws or anything like that. But the NBA is a private industry, and they don't want to be associated with that because they remember what it was like in the 80s when the, show, when the league was on tape delay, and they weren't raking in billions the way that they are now. They're going to protect the brand, and if you compromise the brand in any way, they're going to deal with you. And clearly, when it comes to John ja Morant, they believe he's compromised the brand. And that's why suspension. And Steve, now you and I have been on the same side of issues about private enterprises being yes, able to have. regulate the behavior of employees. We were in some ways, not entirely, in some ways right. on the same page when it came to Kaepernick's yes. protest. But he, yep. quickly, I don't have a lot of time. I want to tell you why I still remain on the side of John Morant here. And I know it's unpopular. Okay, okay it's a math equation for okay. me. Employers increasingly are controlling the behavior of people outside of their work environment. It's happening more okay. and more. Number two, private companies, big companies now, are getting increasingly political. They don't share my values, Stephen A., and they certainly okay. don't share my politics. And when you okay. add those two things together, what I think we're headed for is companies controlling your behavior that have nothing to do with work and remain legal, and it's up to them to decide what is but, dumb. I know they have that right, Stephen A., but I don't think we want to live in a world where your mid-level manager in cubicle Q is telling you what you did in your private yeah. life is going to get you suspended. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're absolutely right, Will Kane. There's no like disagreement right. between you and I with that. But understand something. As much as we lament it, we accept the reality that the bottom line comes into play. And if a company believes that companies that they do business with will feel compromised if this, pro if this individual is representing their brand and it's going to compromise their bottom line it. and cost it. them money, they're going to make decisions. I get you know it. that, I know that. We accept it. So other people have to as well. And That's but, the reality, whether we like it or not. And there but for the grace of God go I and Stephen A. Smith and everyone else. And by the way, it'll just be a matter of time, but I'll be back. I'll be talking to you under the table on sports in no time this, as well. Um, you, you, you will. I'll let you, you, I'll, 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 I'll let you make, take I'll, a few I'll, shots here and there like that. But. I'll kind of allow it. I'll kind of help make it happen, right. especially <laughs> since you've improved your suit game. It desperately <laughs> needed work, and you have stepped it up. I'm very proud of you. You look good tonight. You look good. We've had a lot of disagreements, but we've had more handshakes. I appreciate it, Stephen <laughs> That's A. That's right. All right, no problem, care, buddy. Man. Hey, it's Will Kane. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News channel on YouTube. It's the best way to get our latest interviews and highlights. And click to subscribe to the Will Kane podcast for full episodes right now.